government, like for Chitwan, for example, the camps are paying for the upkeep of Chitwan. Practically, they earn so much. While in India, actually, the government puts in money into the parks. So I think, you know, even the park exists. <laughs> the government, unless they were getting back some money, I don't think they could have just put in so much money without tourism being there, you know, on their own. And to also the country. private sector putting in money in case of Yeah, Nepal. private sector is putting in, government putting in. The private sector, they get the tourists, the taxes are quite a lot, the royalties are a lot. And suddenly they are told you leave the park, you know what happened just mm -hmm. now, which I think is wrong. I have seen the camps, I have been to most of the camps in Nepal, and they make it a point, because it's their bread and butter, to make sure that nothing goes wrong in the areas designated to them. They make sure. They've created water holes where there was no water. They've uh, sort of, if there's any infringement, and you know, they can be very strict about it. And they are in Nepal that you even cut a tree and your camp gets closed down. But this of just moving out the camps from the park, I think it is more uh, economical than actually and politically inclined towards favorism to some other mm -hmm. people trying to, it's politics. It is politics. Let's just say it's just politics. Let's, let's also talk about when we talk about tiger conservation. We talk about tiger conservation because it's also at the top of the food chain. When we conserve a tiger, we also have to preserve the habitat for it. And subsequently, all the other animals that are required also get preserved. Absolutely. Let's start talking about the bottom mm -hmm. of the same pyramid. Are we doing enough to conserve the habitat? We can give examples from India or Nepal. Mm -hmm. Let's stick to Nepal now. Let's stick to Nepal. <laughs> I think um, in Nepal, again, our grassland management is very good. Um, the way we use fire as a tool for grassland management is something that has been recorded time and again. Uh, we are managing our habitats for hog deer, for swamp deer, for rhino, um, I think animals like Cheetal Sambar maybe are more neglected, but the bigger, more visible species mm -hmm. like the rhino are definitely looked after. Of course, the turbulence, that the political instability over the last 10 years in the country has impacted on wildlife, but then it's impacted on every field of life. It's not just wildlife. Um, so I think, uh, yes, I think Nepal is doing a lot. Uh, we need to have the peace in the country so that mm -hmm. the focus can go uh, into peace development. Peace we need for everything. everything. So, so, and that, mm -hmm. yeah, you know. So that, that's the bottom line. Yeah. Countries like ours, you know, is political will. Mm -hmm. uh, wildlife actually, in Nepal, it seems important being a small country. In India, it takes a very back seat. In Nepal also, if there's something else, it always mm -hmm. takes the front sort of the front. Wildlife is always a bad thing. Animals can't vote, you see. So, so it it's not looked part. after properly. I think each animal should get four votes or something. All the politicians would be there protecting the animals. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll see better days for... Now let's change a topic a little bit and let's talk about your filming experience. You followed tigers for three generations. No, I have actually photographed six generations of tigers, but in our film, mm -hmm. we actually filmed three generations, which took us about four years. Mm -hmm. So there was this tigress called Sita, which actually has always been a, my favorite, as well as I think it's the most filmed and photographed tigress in the world now, after we made the film. But uh, she was six, she lived to be 16, which is the second oldest tigress recorded in the world, in the mm -hmm. wild. Oldest is from Chitwan, Chuchi mm -hmm. I think reached to be 17. She was, so we followed her and she had cubs which were just six weeks old when we started filming and we followed her till her cubs grew up and separated from her. But while filming, we found a daughter from the previous litter called Bachi also had cubs. So we followed both these uh, families, showing how these two different families were raising their cubs and what happened with them. That was a great experience, actually. So this you both were both of you were together during the film? Uh, I was doing my PhD research mm -hmm. at the same time. So, so were you also working with the same group of tigers? Same group of tigers, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how is it like it? As he said, it it took him four years to make a film. Mm. 
which in normal circumstances is considered a bit too long. Yes. Normally, every kind of projects, researches, films, or even photography for that matter, takes a long time. As, as a researcher on Tiger, tell us how difficult it is to have patience for such a long period. See, um, it, it was even more difficult for me because I uh, took a conscious decision that I would not use any invasive techniques. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have um, any tigers that were radio collared or, you know, anything like that. And it was all a question of actually waiting and watching. Mm -hmm. um, but also supplemented by a lot of work that was just actually repeated, boring, things that you just did ev on every so many days mm -hmm. because you needed to monitor what was happening around the tigers, not just with the tigers. So there were days when I'd be working from uh, 5 in the morning till 5 in the evening and there were other days when I'd work from 5 in the evening to 5 in the morning. And there'd be It days, takes a lot, it takes it, a lot, it's yeah. and there'd boring. Be days, there, when there'd be a tiger on my right but I had to take the road on the left because I had to do that transect at that time. So I'd leave the tiger sitting there with my heart there, but head off that way. So it's difficult as it's well. It's very difficult because, you know, you're, you're fascinated by the tiger, mm -hmm. but you have to go and count, it, you know, trees or the number of cheetah in mm -hmm. the grassland mm -hmm. or, you know, what's happening with the water situation, something like that. So you mm -hmm. just, you, you can't even say, okay, I'm studying tigers, I'm going to spend all my time just watching tigers. Mm -hmm. As we earlier said, it's all about the habitat they grow in. Yeah. And Mr. Rana, you, as you earlier said, you're kind of romantic conservationist. And I believe for every photograph... Yeah, yeah you could say romantic or you could say... It's a passion. It's yeah, a passion. Could it could... <laughs> okay, for every... As I, I know, uh, for every one picture, good picture of tiger that you take, there are at least four other failed pictures which... I would you, say one out of hundred. One out of hundred. One out of hundred. So let, let's also know about how your passion keeps you going for those 99 shots you've already taken and not a single good one. Well, before it was very expensive, number one, mm -hmm. and very took time consuming because uh, we were using film, you see, we were using mm -hmm. slides. So you'd be wasting a lot of slides. A lot of money. Now with well. the digital coming, it's much easier. So I don't know why I still prefer slides. People with a digital camera take more photographs, you ask them. Now mm -hmm. I take less. But it is very time consuming. Like even while filming, we've actually had to wait for 11 hours one day, 6 hours another day to get a 30 second shot of a tiger at 48 degrees heat. When it was 48, mm -hmm. it was the hottest year that was in Bangladesh. And we were elephants sometimes for 11 to 12 hours in that heat. The main thing about wildlife is you will go days and days doing the same thing. You might not see something really nice. You do take your photographs. But suddenly you will see something. You know, maybe in a month, maybe in two months, maybe in six months. You see something which is amazing. Which you know you are one of the few chosen in the world who will be seeing it like that. And all that waiting and everything just goes out of the window. You are very happy. With it. Once you find it, it's like Eureka. Yeah, it's like it. Eureka. And you know you are one of the few who will, who will be seeing this or photographing this. Wildlife or tigers, no two, two photographs will you find the same. Even if you are taking of the same tiger from the same place, there will be a different angle, they will be changed. And one thing about the jungle is it keeps changing. You know, people say, oh, he or she, they are tiger experts. I do not believe that anyone can be an expert as far as wildlife and nature is concerned. You are always a student. Would, would you changing. agree to that, Mr. Jan? Because it we would like changing. to believe that you're, anti, you're a tiger expert. I also think that um, one lives and learns and every park, every month shows you a completely new aspect. So, I mean, I've always maintained right through, even in my thesis, that what I've quoted in my thesis is true for the tiger population of Bandhavgarh at that moment in time. I can't spread that information and justify it, it by applying it to any other populations. So uh, there's nothing called generalization. You've seen I one. Advise I mean, most of the people would believe that you've seen one, you've seen all. I don't know. That's no the way. strangest thing about no. tigers. Each tiger has a character. You know, you might have a litter of cubs from the same mother. 
but some will be shy, some will be aggressive, some seem to fool around much more. They are like humans, they are like characters. Once you get to know them and see them, you'll see each has a different character. No, it's, it's nice to hear all those things because most of us are scared of tiger. Yeah. That is the worst thing you can do. You cannot be scared of tigers. You know, you know in Chitwan, okay, let's say a few people, five, six people might be getting killed in a year. I don't know the exact figures. <laughs> Even that is less than And we are so less scared less of tigers. Crossing the roads in Kathmandu, how many people are killed? Please let me know the ratio. It will be at least 100 to 1. Okay, with the accidents around. So is it safer staying in the jungle or crossing roads in Kathmandu? Please let me know that with the figures. Mm -hmm. How many accidents, I'm, I'm how sure many people are killed crossing It's, it's more road dangerous road. to live in the streets of Kathmandu. Yeah. Yeah. Tigers usually avoid humans. You walk yeah. up to a tiger. They usually, when they hear humans or see humans, they'll run away. Then of course there are man-eating tigers which will kill humans, but that is due to necessity. And this, due to and this is an aberration rather than that a rule. necessity. Yeah. The tigers are too old and cannot hunt natural prey. Yeah. Or the tigers have been injured, which is usually man-made injuries. Mm -hmm. And again, they are short or something, they cannot hunt their natural prey. I'm sure all of this conversation would go a long way in convincing our audience that tigers are I, nice people. Can we say people? Tigers are nice tigers. Tigers are nice yeah, tigers. I mean, by Don't saying call people. Them people by disgracing them. Oh. You'll be disgracing them better than people, basically. Not, not everyone, actually. Not yeah, everyone. You seeing what's yeah. happening. I hope there are more uh, romantic conservationists <laughs> like you. Thank you so much for coming to us. Thank you. Thank you. That was Mr. Nandarana and Mrs. Latikarana, the con conservationists and romantics when it comes to wildlife. Thank you so much for watching. Keep watching Kantipur TV.